Hey guys, I am up in a man lift and we are finishing up the overhangs and I think I figured out how to get some really straight fascia boards on the gable end. The far end of the building is finished. We kind of struggled with that a little bit, uh, but this end is working out really well and I want to show you uh, my technique for getting the gabled end uh, fascia nice and straight. Here's what I do. I run a string line. I put a screw. I have this end fascia board right at 10 and a half inches for the overhang and I count back two inches from the edge and I put a screw in and then I run a string line all the way up here. I have this one cut. This is my top purlin. Same deal. 10 and a half inches exactly. I count back two, put a screw, run a string line and then I just take my tape and I measure out two inches from the string line on each one of these purlins, mark it and cut it off with the saw. Uh, I wish I would have done that down there, but I didn't. Uh, we set those exactly at 10 and a half inches. These, as you can see, I ran long uh, because I didn't want to have to cut things and I wanted to have a little extra play in case this truss didn't fit exactly how I, I liked, but it, it worked out pretty well. Um, you can see here the lines, the screws that I put in. If you watched the earlier videos on setting the trusses, I had these in before the truss came up and when we put the truss into place, all I had to do was impact these timber lock screws down uh, and it worked out pretty good. So this side um, I'm very happy with. Here's my fascia here. You can see pretty pretty straight, not, not too shabby. The gabled ends, there's not a whole lot of fudging you can do but I think it looks pretty good, honestly. Especially for a rookie like me. All right, we're gonna mark all these down, cut them off, and then we can go ahead and start putting our fascia board up. And by the way, one of these little man lift things, very nice, makes this job so easy. First fascia board up on this side. And what I wanted to show you guys is how I do my splices. Instead of trying to do splices on a purlin, I just let them run long. So this is an eight footer. Works really good with a one foot overhang. It puts me right in the middle of a two foot gap. So I use a one foot block, six inches on this one, six inches on the next one. And that's a really solid connection at all my splices. You can see I've done it there and there so we got two eight footers and then a partial to go up it's like 21 feet roughly and we have one more full one to run and then we'll get up here and we'll cut this angle and i'll show you that there's the finished product at the peak it's not perfect but we can make that work it's nice and flush This purlin's got a little bit of a twist in it, so the corner's kind of sticking up here, but I think we can make that make that work. And that completes the fascia on the gabled ends. Now we're gonna go down to the eave ends and see if we can't get those straightened out. This morning, we are working the eave end overhangs and getting our fascia board straight. And you can see here, there's a big gap that is because our porches, our porch, front porch will be going there and we have the same on the back side of the house. We will be finishing that later once we get the porches tied in. Uh, but for now, we're gonna get this side and that side uh, nice and straight. And what I've done is use my string line again. We've put a nail here on the end tail and a nail on that end tail. And we're just gonna get these all nice and straight with the string line. What I do here, guys, I put a nail on the end truss tail and then my end truss tail down here. I have another nail and I get this string line basically straight up from this bottom edge of my fascia board. And I do it on both ends. Let's see if I can get this here, show you guys. Get it so it's just kissing the square on both ends here and down there. And then these middle three, I can check the same deal. And these actually look pretty good. And that is right where it needs to be. So I'm gonna leave well enough alone there. Come to our next tail. 
And that one is right on the money too. It is just kissing the string. Ever so slightly, I'm not gonna mess with that. Now that one has a little bit of a gap, about a 16th of an inch. So just for demonstration purposes, what I do is I leave these, these are not locked down on top. I will put timber lock screws on the top of these tails, but until I get everything adjusted, I only use these structural screws tied in on both sides. So if I need to move it, all I need to do is loosen these screws, adjust the tail, and then I can put my tim come back in later, put my timber lock screws in and make this a permanent tail. That's how I do my evens. We'll go down and see if we got one that's a little further off. These all look pretty good. I'm gonna move this one just a skosh. We've just loosened these, slid the truss tail uh, out just a little bit, and you can see we're now just off the string slightly. So that's, that's how you can fine tune this stuff. I mean, that was off a 16th of an inch. So uh, luckily these are pretty nice. This should go pretty quick. They're pretty straight and they're fairly short runs. So they shouldn't be off a whole lot. Let's go down and get this next one. Now here's a tail that's off just a little bit. So I want to show you this. It needs to come out probably an eighth of an inch. So we're going to fix that. So we're going to come back here, take our screw out. Couple on the back side here. So now that tail is loose. And let's see if we can't get it a little closer. Close, but it needs to come out just a little bit. close but still needs to come out and there we got it so you can either bump here or a bump on the back side here I just cut these a little short to leave myself a little gap but by removing these screws, that makes this adjustable. Now we'll go ahead and throw these, probably put a different hole, move them over so they don't suck it back to where it was. But then we'll go ahead and put our timber lock screws in the top here after we check these next two. That's a wrap on the overhangs. I hope you learned some things from the video. It's kind of hard to film when I'm crawling around on the roof and you know trying to do things with one hand and holding the camera in the other. but. Uh, we're done for now for the overhangs. When we tie in the porches, there's going to be a little bit more work that needs to be done with those to tie the two uh, fascia uh, runs in together and the overhang on the porches. But that'll come at a later date. Uh, for now, I got to get some rest because sheathing on the roof is next and we have almost 8,000 pounds of zip sheathing to put on the roof and we also need to check to see how square the roof is so stay tuned for that that's going to be on the next video uh, it's going to be a no holds barred we'll see how close we got on the roof 
Uh, it should be, should be fun. But uh, in the meantime, I'm going to get some rest and recuperate and get ready to put all that sheathing on the roof. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video.